What is going on guys? Captain Papi here. Welcome back to another One Piece Trader Cruise video. Kind of sound like Totsuki there, but we're going to roll with it nonetheless. As you can see, I still got this dress shirt on. Still got my watch. Still got all my jewelry on. I'm right straight back home from work. And I thought I would put my two cents into the ring of the ninth anniversary celebration or all the information we've received today. I just want to preface this by saying... I have consumed no other content than the official content. I've had a conversation with Todd and Stump. So if my videos or the talking points that I talk about align to those, I don't mean any ill intention by that. I have got their thoughts and opinions on us that might influence uh, what I say a little bit as well. But this is all just me raw. I've watched these videos and I've commented them on them on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Captain Papa with two eyes. Um, and... Let's just get into it, you know, there's no no time in the present to just do, you know, roll through and figure it out. Take one headphone off so I can hear myself a little better. So there's a like really nice cinematic. I'm just gonna lower this a little bit. Doesn't have to be too loud. Well, you know, you have this really nice cinematic, it rolls through, shows all the anniversaries, shows the New Year's, you know, and then it shows Odensky, it shows you know, the jabronis and all this and that. And you're kind of thinking like, okay, so we are building up to this final arc, this final one act. And then... We get our anniversary units in the form of Luffy and Yamato. Obviously, in the in the video coming, they do go into like the actual details of the unit to a limited degree. But just my like opinions purely about the unit being Luffy and Yamato, I am indifferent to this fact. Obviously, there were more hype choices. Obviously, there were more exciting moments they could pick from. Obviously, they could have gone with a better selection per se. However, it makes sense. Yamato broke into such a high ranking in the popularity rankings in 2020, in the previous, sorry, uh, the previous character rankings and only haven't been out for during that year. Luffy naturally is the protagonist. Since second anniversary, we've always had a Luffy in every single anniversary. It made sense. If you really look deep into it, it makes sense. Yamato sells. She just does. Or they just do. Luffy is the protagonist. What people have to reflect on and keep in mind is that this game treasure cruise is not created for the global audience let me repeat that one piece treasure cruise is not created for the global audience it is created for the jp audience japanese people the japanese player base that love the main character the mc hence why luffy is there as well The special animation is just, like, absolutely gorgeous, by the way. It's absolutely stunning. Now, I wonder if this special animation is, uh, is dependent on who you actually use the special with. And then, obviously, everyone kind of noticed this part here. It's a strength and dex unit. You have color affinity. You have an ore boost. You have the uh, the percent damage reduction. On top of that, you have another unit. You have three other units here, and we we are aware of what these units are. Fantastic, great. Now, this was the first video that released. It released at one p.m., so it knew the clock. Um, and I understood where people's concerns were because when you have this being the video that's portraying your anniversary in its own regard this isn't a lot of substance we've received information of one unit formally received naturally the treasure cruise people love to tease other stuff at times too which obviously showing these three units here which are rare recruits and this uh, Odin and Toki dual unit, which we know it is, as another one as well. So, I understand the complaint in that regard there. But, I don't know. I think my mentality is still in the same kind of boat of being indifferent. I don't care. 
enough about the characters to get hella upset about them picking the wrong units for anniversary. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not immune to it, but it just doesn't affect me. But I do understand where people are coming from in that regard. Um, thanks, Blocksite. Um, 15 minutes later, we, we got the second video. Now, this is the actual information video for the anniversary. One thing that you'll notice in this video is that there's no Yoshi. I think that this is a very uh, important thing for people to reflect on and think about, is that what is going on in any capacity, we haven't seen Yoshi in a long ass time, and I don't know if it's just, obviously it's faster to develop these videos when you're not having to like record someone and refilm takes and such, but at the same time, it feels a lot less personable, and it feels like there's a great detachment between myself and the game when our own producer isn't appearing in the videos about the game itself. It it's a bit upsetting to say the least. That's that that's what I think at least. They do take a long time to get through like the text and stuff, but we will be receiving 99 gems on any day, which is fantastic. Great. It's 99 gems like haha meme, it's 9th anniversary. But let's keep in perspective that 50 gems is a multi. 99 gems guarantees you not even two multis. It guarantees you one, technically speaking. Obviously, when you log in, you get a gem. There's your 100 quarter day, right? But when we know that the unit's going to be guaranteed on the 30th multi, and potentially there will not be good steps from just pure guesstimation... Two multis for free is not enough. It, I know that might sound greedy, but it's just not enough. What else we got here? So we have this little thing here where between, the, if we log in between the periods of the 11th of May, so any time, and then to the 9th of June, we will accumulate 50 gems plus three red tickets. What I want to note is is that we already have the after party listed. We know that the after party, we've, the after party has been a thing for anniversaries for quite a while now, where we have the anniversary, then we have really good characters that come out post anniversary. And this only lasting two weeks is also very interesting. That might just be the login bonus only lasting two weeks as well. Who knows? But at least we know that the after party begins on the 9th of June and Annie pretty much will go from the 11th of May to the 9th of June. So for an entire month. Cool, whatever, moving on, sick, awesome. Yep, 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 yep. Free, rare, free multis, I think there's about 10 or 11 free multis in total, including a free multi on the actual Annie banner itself. Stock standard stuff. Uh, good luck to everyone. I hope everyone gets these kinds of units. I don't know. I doubt it, but it is what it is. Now, this is the biggest point of concern for me. The biggest point of concern for me is the content that we have when it comes to anniversary. It's all well and good to cry about the characters and, oh, they should have picked Luffy and Momonosuke. Oh, where's Zoro? Where's Sanji? Who gives a shit about the characters if there's no content to play? Use your brains. This is the biggest point of problem. Yes, I understand that Pirate King Adventure will be releasing alongside Anniversary. But is PKA really enough to carry Anniversary? Like, think about it for a second. It won't be. What are the free-to-play units we will be acquiring? We know we're going to be getting a Roger at some point in terms of the Pirate King Adventure stuff, but will there be a raid? Will there be arenas? Will there be 
any other free-to-play units in any capacity at all. What Super Evolutions will be coming with this celebration too. These are the elements. Will it be the generic insert blitz into a celebration and it becomes an anniversary celebration? This is what we need to get the conversation rolling on more so as well. I'm not saying that people aren't talking about it, but this is just as important of a conversation, is that there is nothing to play. Yes, okay, you can be upset about Luffy and Yamato existing, but when there's nothing to actually play in the game, then we're at a we're at a problem situation here. But as you can see, we have Luffy Schmidt Carnival pause. We have the Fortune event, so another lottery, which is great. So that's 15 days of lottery. I'm getting uh, mind flooded by the music, by the way. And then finally, what could be actually a good one is the double rate of success up for uh, powering up. But it's only only being three days is just ridiculously stingy. I don't understand the premise behind that, but it is what it is, you know? Um, these are just dumb. These events are just stupid. I don't even want to care about this. Invite j friends for gems, cool, whatever. Your whole invite campaign is such a stupid system that requires so much finagling and time investment that no one can actually get rewarded from this. And the OPTC countdown quiz, my brothers and sisters in Christ, go follow Godot's parody account. It is much more enjoyable to do the quiz there than it would be to do the quiz in the official one. But we get 55 gems from the official campaign in terms of the quiz. And I believe the um, the uh, the friend campaign is like, you get 10 gems as a reward, so I don't know. We'll see though. Now, this is the new illustration feature that they that we got from the data download. The two, uh, the two quills that were like kind of in an, in an X shape. From what we can see, it seems as if we are able to alternate between between the arts. You can also recruit alternating characters, Luffy and Yamato from the ninth and the celebration grand finale of Wano Super Sugo Fest. Okay, so it's Super Sugo Fest. We knew that anyway. But from what we see here, it just seems that we can alternate between arts. And like, who fucking cares? I'm sorry, but... The fact that we are consuming resources to the point where we're using resources to allow us to have alternating arts of characters is, it actually boggles my mind. We are consuming resources. The money that the game is earning is being spent on doing this. Keep in mind, the purpose of removing four star units, like four star like raids that would evolve into five star, or four star rare recruits that would evolve into five star. The purpose of removing those units was because it was too time consuming. It was too time consuming to constantly have to make multiple art copies of a unit. And I get the counter argument that this will be for bespoke and unique units. That's wonderful. But it is kind of like a step backwards in that sense. Why are we bringing back this idea of having multiple arts of the same unit when we were meant to be stepping away from this in any particular degree? It doesn't make much sense to be bringing it back to as we were doing it for that. So you know, the regular alternate version with the effect ink pen. All right. Enough said about the fucking political aspects of things. Let's get into the meat and fucking taters of the units themselves. Now, Luffy and Yamato, it is what it is. The captain ability though, strength decks and quick characters, special charge time by two. At the start of the quest reduces uh, free spirit striker and fighters characters, special charge time by further one. So three turns of cooldown. Boost Cruise HP by 1.3, Recovery by 1.2, Boost Strength, Dex, Quick, Free Spirit, Characters Attack by 6x, Boost Other Characters Attack by 5.25. They, This unit is already in conversation to be the best character in the game. You have a flat, a flat 6x attack to three colors and a class. Free Spirit arguably being one of the best classes. And three colors is huge. Coverage in that regard too. 
You have a 6 edge captain. And not only that, you have a rainbow 5.25S captain. Yes, you can make the argument that this captain ability will be in their dual forms. So most of the time, you won't be getting these kinds of numbers. However, in this day and age, the content that we play, you're going to be popping this unit special in Kazunas, in TMs, in in whatever the whatever else, and you will be getting that level. On top of that, you make four slots have matching effect. And then on top of that as well, you can hit perfects to eat recovery and 30% damage reduction and 10 turns of bind. This unit is fucking insane. And you are delusional if you think that this unit's kit is not cracked. I understand people aren't happy with what the unit is themselves, but you have to play devil's advocate here and you have to look at this unit and say, oh my god, if this is the first legend that's being released in Anniversary that we're aware of, the other legends releasing should be equivocal to some degree of this unit. It's insane. They're special. Reduces crew's special charge time by a turn. Boosts strength, dex, and quick character slot effects by 3x for a turn. Reduces damage taken by 60% for a turn. Changes adjacent slots to recovery. Increases all enemies' damage taken by 1.75 for a turn. If the crew has a slot boost and damage reduction, except status at the same time when the special is launched. Extends the duration of attack, orb, chain lock statuses by turn and becomes Luffy and Yamato for three turns. Now, the interesting part about this unit, which we don't know how it's going to work just yet. Either this unit could have double special activation. This unit could have something unique in their, in their swap. They could have uh, as, uh, a certain ability that we haven't seen yet. But launching the special as a double character will have a stronger effect. So there will be a way that will allow us to launch this unit's special twice. Reduces crew's cooldown by two turns. Boosts strength, dex, and quick orbs by 3.25 for two turns. Reduces damage taken by 80% for a turn. Changes adjacent slots to Wano. Note, not block orbs. Very interesting. Increases uh, at, and increases all enemies' damage taken by 2x, ignoring immunity. Uh, Super Tandem Shanks respectfully hold that. Fuck stump. If the crew has a slot boost and damage reduction, at the same time the special's launch, extends attack, orb, and chain lock by turn. Mind you, we only know the captain ability and the special of this unit. We don't know the swap. We don't know the super swap. We don't know the, the Rush Sugo, because I believe they have Rush Sugo. I believe it was portrayed in the previous video. Um, we don't know their Pyre Rumble kick. We don't know their GP stuff. So there is a large assortment of aspects of their entire kit that allow us to uh, significantly determine the quality of the unit. Nonetheless, from purely the captain, the special, and then the second style of special, you have an uncanny amount of damage coming out of one unit, and that always is amazing. It's confirmed. This is a... Uh, Toki and Odin dual unit as seen in the previous video and it is an anniversary exclusive character We pray to God. It's only one. I want to give big props for the Nami, Robin and Usopp rare recruits. Their arts are Immaculate they look so gorgeous and I mean it's three rare recruits. You, you can't complain, right? It's the commonality of, of anniversaries the commonality of Sugos and more will appear Please reflect on that. More will appear. So that's all the news. This is just the last part that I want to meme on. And I'm going to leave this as the panel as I give my final thoughts. 174 Rainbow Gems is actually nothing. It's three and a half multis. Unless you're chucking in discounts and you're chucking in one gem multis... 174 gems will get you three multis to three multis into 30 multis required for a character. It's not enough. Full well knowing there will be other legends available at some point. That's kind of my debrief of everything. I don't need to really get into anything else. But what I want to say, and kind of what this video is probably going to be titled be uh, going to be titled as. 
Right now is the time for the players to vote with their wallets. I'm going to speak for myself first. I'm pulling. I like the unit. I think it's great. I love anniversary. And I'm just going to try to have fun with it. I I don't care. In a sense that, not that I don't care about providing feedback and being critical. In the sense that management of this game seems to, seems to not care about the product itself. So I'm going to do what I want to have fun. That aside, if, 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 if you are someone that has complained about the game, that doesn't like the direction of the game, that doesn't like what's going on, that is crying about the characters, that all, all of the sort, if you are somebody in that, in that degree, do yourself a favor and vote with your wallet. At the end of the day, Bandai is a business. You want to stick it to the man? You want to show a business, you know, the truth? You don't spend money. You really want to send a message to Bandai. It would be in your best interest to not spend money. Because I know a majority of the One Piece Strategy Group player base is very much about talking the talk, but not about walking the walk. I can see a handful, if not a room full of people that will cry and that will complain about every little significant, insignificant um, aspect of OPTC, but then I will see them continuously keep spending exorbitant amounts of money on the game. There's a difference between being critical and complaining. For those that aren't aware, I loved One Piece Treasure Cruise. I enjoy playing this game. I have fun in my own way. Hence why I don't mind spending on a product that I enjoy. But if you are someone that is genuinely not having fun, that is genuinely not enjoying the game, that is genuinely not enjoying the direction the game is taking, you have the power to not spend any money on the game. And in your head, you might think, but I'm only one person and the whales are going to spend a lot Keep in mind, you do it, somebody else does it, somebody else does it. It's a knock-on effect. You have to remember that at the end of the day, OPTC is a product in the portfolio of Bandai Namco Entertainment. If If the product itself is returning numbers that aren't satisfactory, it's a double-edged sword. Either Bandai take a practicality approach and start to improve the game so the numbers go up, or they take a drastic approach and then pull the plug from the game. For a lot of people, that's a win-win. For me, that's kind of a win-win as well. But I want to reiterate because we're getting to about 22, 25 minutes long. It's time to vote with your wallet. You don't like anniversary. You don't like the direction the game's taking. You don't like the characters that they've chosen to celebrate the ninth anniversary of One Piece Treasure Cruise. Don't spend any money. Period. Money talks. And if your money is silent, there are no words. End of story. But I think that does it for me. I don't think there's much else there. And they just go through and they show that stuff off again. Uh, that does it for me. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. I understand I'm hypercritical of things. However, that's just my mentality of it. But with that being said, I've been Captain Puppet. And I'll show you guys next time. Peace.